this is a PC, like a whole PC. It runs Windows 11 and everything. And this thing is pretty powerful. It's got 32 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte SSD, and even an Intel Core i9 processor, which is shockingly similar to the massive PC behind me. It's called the Geekom IT13. You can look at the specs right here. I'm not gonna go read it, go read it yourself, I'm not doing it for you. I knew tiny PCs like this existed before, but this PC has a 13th gen i9 in it. And that got me thinking, can you actually use a PC this small and stream from it using OBS? Maybe you're a console gamer and you just want something small so you can stream from your couch, or in my case, my bed. Or maybe you want to stream from your kitchen and you don't have a lot of desk space. It's called desks, whatever they, what are the things in the kitchen are called. And you just want something simple and low profile that doesn't get in your way while you cook up your favorite recipe. The fillet mignon that you like, you know, you the one you, you make that you're really good at it. Or maybe you just want to set up the world's most unnecessary TikTok streaming setup. I've already been asked by a lot of people if you could potentially use this in a dual PC streaming setup. And it's a little bit complicated, but we'll get into that. Before we get into that, uh, let's get into the boring stuff. So uh, here are all the specs again. You can go read it. The biggest thing that you'll see that's missing is a dedicated GPU. So you're not really going to be using this to play games like Starfield or Cyberpunk. I don't know anything about those games, but um, they're, uh, they're popular, I think. I don't think anyone is really buying a PC this small for its gaming performance. It does cost 850 US dollars, so you could probably build a comparable gaming PC for that same amount of money. That being said, even though it is this tiny, I did manage to play Apex at 1080p low settings and got a pretty steady 60 FPS on it, which is a lot more than I was expecting considering how small it is. I also loaded up some Pokemon without guns in this and even though I played with everything on low settings, 1080p, I got a steady 25 to 30 frames per second, which I would consider pretty playable. I mean, when you consider it to actual Pokemon, that's pretty decent. But for the most part, you're not really buying the IT13 for its gaming performance. You're not gonna be doing any video editing or complex 3D modeling. So I'm not gonna bother doing heavy benchmarking and graphs for this PC. It's boring and no one wants to watch that. Um, so you can go watch other people's videos if you want that because they have all the data. I don't feel like doing it myself. What I'm interested in is how practical is a PC like this for streaming? What are some actually productive and creative uses for this PC? Now, again, for the millionth time, this PC is extremely small. It easily fits in the palm of my hand, but you still get a decent selection of IOs. So you got two USB ports on the front, a full-size SD card reader on the side, two more USB ports on the back, two HDMI ports, two USB-C ports, which are USB 4, which means they can also be used for external displays. And if you have access to an external GPU, you can add that later on down the line if you really wanted to use this for gaming performance or editing. It's also very easy to access the internals. It's just got four screws underneath, which I appreciate are just exposed and not hidden under the feet like some other PCs that I've used. Um, you can access the internal SSD and the RAM, and there's also an empty slot for you to add an additional NVMe drive and a standard 2.5 inch drive. So if you wanted to record a lot of like 4K footage in this, you can have up to three drives in this, which is insane. One of the cool things about the IT13 is it comes with a Visa mounting bracket. So basically you just take this plate and screw it onto the back of the Visa mounting holes on the back of basically every monitor. And then you can just slide this PC onto the back of the monitor and then you basically turn any monitor into like kind of like an iMac. You know, like the iMac is like, it's like the monitor and the PC into like one thing. You, you can make it like that. So it's a nice way to just hide the PC out of the way. All you need is a power cable to plug the PC in and then another power cable for your monitor. I found this really convenient for hiding away my monitor in really tight spaces like on a kitchen counter where you don't necessarily have a lot of room because you got like all your ingredients and stuff like your ramen and the, the powder for the ramen. And there's enough USB ports to connect multiple cameras and a microphone to this. In my setup, I connected a USB webcam and a mirrorless camera using a cheap little $20 capture card. 
and I was able to run a kitchen stream. And the fact that I didn't have to put my PC on the counter meant that I just had a lot more space. I already said this space for ingredients and then the thing about the ramen and the powder. Switching stuff up on the fly in my script here. Fun fact, I put QP mayo, a raw egg, and some chopped up garlic into my ramen. It's fucking bomb, okay? You gotta try it sometime. I know some of you guys think it's weird, but like, don't knock it till you try it. This setup also works great if you're a console streamer. So let's say you've got a PS5 or a Switch or an Xbox, and you've been streaming directly from your console, which you can't even do from a Switch, but let's just say that you wanted to stream using some overlays or some alerts, and you wanted to do that directly in your lounge room from your couch, but you didn't want to put like a gigantic PC in your lounge room. You could just chuck a monitor next to your TV and then hook up the IT13 with a USB capture card, and then you could you could you got the whole power of OBS in here. I've only got a Switch, so I booted up some Pal World without guns, and I just streamed myself playing from my bed, and it was a pretty easy experience. I just connected it using some generic 1080p 60 capture card, and I was able to stream using overlays, some OBS plugins, got the blur plugin going in. We'll talk about the overlay a little bit later, but everything works smooth. Now, if you're looking to capture some PS5 or Xbox footage, Elgato just released a couple new capture cards this week. One of them is the 4KX, and that allows you to pass through 4K 120 to your TV, but record on your PC at like 1080p 60, or I think even 4K can record, and you could use that capture card on this PC. And you don't even have to use this for streaming with OBS. I have a vertical display on the back of my stream that has OBS on it, but I never actually stream using OBS. I just use the monitor as a means to display cool stuff. Like I made like this bit menu and I made like all these different effects, like this solar flare effect that has like TN. He does like the solar flare thing. You, you know that, that, that thing? I actually already made a video on this idea, but basically I got this giant touchscreen monitor behind me on my stream that I also made transparent so I could do some really cool effects with it. And I also made this widget that displays every time I get a hype train and it shows like the percentage with a loading bar. So there are creative ways to use this monitor that don't involve necessarily streaming from it. You could still run OBS on it, or you could even turn this into a gigantic TikTok streaming rig like I did. Now, TikTok is quite possibly the worst streaming platform that I've ever used. But if you really like TikTok, you can set up this PC in a vertical format and then display yourself doing your NPC streams or whatever it is that you do on TikTok. Now, when I first booted up the IT13, it boots straight into the Windows 11 startup, and I was very surprised to find that there's literally no bloatware in this. No random bullshit that you have to uninstall, like literally every other pre-built PC that I've ever used. It doesn't even have like a stock wallpaper. Like it's literally the stock Windows 11 wallpaper. After installing my usual set of programs, I installed OBS and wanted to see how far I could push it. Now, obviously, if you're just streaming your webcam, the IT13 can handle that flawlessly, but to challenge it a little bit harder, I installed a few OBS plugins. So I created some scenes that use the composite blur plugin, the drop shadow plugin, some animated transitions, camera borders, stinger transitions, and something that just has a little bit more production value. And this is what I came up with. It's using a 1080p 60 canvas, and for the most part, everything ran okay. I didn't get zero drop frames or anything, but it was less than half a percent, which I would consider pretty smooth. You won't have access to NVENC because, again, there's no graphics card, which is going to be a consistent theme here, but it does have an i9. And that does give you access to QuickSync, which is similar to NVENC. It uses a separate part of your CPU and the recordings looked pretty great. I was able to use the highest quality quick sync preset and I was pretty pleased with how everything looked. Encoding is actually super easy to do in this PC because of that i9. What's difficult is rendering. So that's why I installed all of these different OBS plugins because all these OBS plugins use a pretty significant part of your GPU. And I was pushing that integrated graphics 
pretty hard. So with this overlay, which isn't super duper complicated, but I was already using like 70 to 80% of my GPU and spamming move transitions did drop a few frames. It wasn't anything crazy or noticeable, but it just wasn't perfectly smooth. And keep in mind, I'm not even playing any games on the PC. I just have a capture card connected to my Switch so I can play some Pal World without guns. But as long as you're not doing crazy transitions all the time, if you're just sitting there playing your game, you can get a pretty smooth experience. But just because I'm a masochist, I ported over my entire OBS setup from my main PC that has like 100 scenes, 350 sources, over 20 plugins installed, 4K canvas, tons of move transitions, and even without streaming, my OBS uses like 40% on my 3080 Ti. So I don't even know why I tested this because running that OBS setup runs at like 20 FPS on the mini PC. But I don't really know what I was expecting. That was obviously gonna happen. But the point is the lack of a dedicated GPU is always gonna be your most limiting bottleneck when it comes to streaming from the IT13. But the majority of people that just wanna run a standard stream, you guys are gonna be just fine. Now a question I've been getting a lot is, can you use this for a dual PC streaming setup? Now, some people use an entirely separate dedicated PC just for running OBS so that their gaming PC can focus on just gaming. And so naturally, some people have been wondering, can you replace your giant streaming PC with something that's just small and convenient like this? And while you definitely can, it's not really something that I'd say is worth it. The only time I really recommend a dual PC streaming setup is if you're doing something super complex in OBS that's taking away GPU resources away from your game and it's heavily impacting your frame rate. But because the IT13 doesn't have a dedicated GPU, you can't really run crazy OBS setups anyway. You also don't have access to things like RTX background removal if you wanna green screen your body without a green screen, and you won't have access to RTX noise removal if you have a lot of background noise that you wanna remove. And because it's a mini PC, you may not have enough ports to connect your microphone, mouse, keyboard, your stream deck, your capture card. You get what I'm saying, you get, it gets pretty complicated. So who would I recommend this PC to? Well, if space is your top priority, like you're gaming from your couch or you're running a kitchen stream, then the IT13 is gonna be perfect for you. I would probably recommend that you look at the cheaper i5 and i7 models though, because they are significantly more affordable and you probably won't be utilizing the potential of that i9 because you're ultimately gonna be bottlenecked by the integrated graphics. So if you wanna save some money, I would probably go for that i5 model. Me personally, I will probably be using the IT13 to upgrade the transparent monitor behind me that you've seen on my Twitch streams. So go follow me on Twitch if you feel like it, I'm not gonna force you. Thank you Geekom for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link down below for where you can purchase this. It will also have links to the i5, i7, and i9 models. Um, but yeah, thanks. Um, I'll see you guys um, maybe, maybe never again. Who knows what the future holds?